in this video we'll be talking about insulin insulin is a peptide hormone secreted by the pancreatic uh, endocrine pancreas and insulin is processed in several step so initially it is pre pro insulin that has a signal sequence chain a b and c eventually the signal sequence is removed and now it becomes pro insulin it has again chain a b and c eventually chain c is removed and finally it becomes mature insulin and secreted out so in this video we'll talk about the insulin uh, processing which i already we had a quick idea then we'll talk about insulin function insulin um, signaling and lastly we'll see how the insulin secretion takes place what is the molecular mechanism of that so let's talk about the function of insulin so molecular function of insulin is to uptake glucose so basically it lead to uptake of glucose in several cells mostly skeletal muscle adipose tissue etc so glucose gets inside the adipose tissue and skeletal muscle using specific transporter known as glutes we'll come into details but insulin is a master regulator of anabolism that means simply at a molecular level it like to builds up thing so what does it build up so it increases glycogen synthesis that means it converts glucose into glycogen a more storable form then it lead to sodium retention in the kidneys it lead to increased protein synthesis via mTOR pathway it lead to increased uptake of potassium ion and amino acids but it also lead to decrease glucagon release and decrease lipolysis so glucagon release uh, lead to would lead to increased glucose level the job of insulin is to reduce glucose from the blood and channel it to the tissues that might need it and in the tissue use biomolecules and polymerize them to store it in, in a storable format so it's a master regulator of anabolism so first thing we have to understand that glucose uh, gets converted into glycogen and stored in the muscle and liver for future for energy demanding situations and there are specific enzymes that convert these uh, or polymerize glucose into glycogen one of that is glycogen synthetase if you want to learn more about glycogenesis you can click on the video in i button but anyway this particular enzyme has active and inactive states so insulin makes sure this particular uh, a uh, enzyme gets activated so a phosphate activity is required for it to be activated and insulin positively regulate that phosphatase activity whereas glucagon epinephrine negatively regulates that glucagon in turn basically positively regulate kinase action which prevent the activity so that's how glucagon and insulin plays opposing role it's important to understand when it comes to fat metabolism again insulin and glucagon has different roles so let's say we have high blood glucose which happens after the meal high blood glucose means high insulin so in that situation what would happen fatty acid biosynthesis would take place so anabolism would take place and the key enzyme is acetyl coa carboxylase which converts acetyl coa to malonyl coa again acetyl coa has different conformation the phosphorylated form is inactive the non phosphorylated form is basically active so conversion of an inactive to active form requires phosphatase enzyme and the kinase enzyme inhibits it so when glucose is high due to glycolysis there is lot of acetyl coa also when glucose is high basically insulin is secreted and insulin triggers phosphatase enzyme which lead to production of uh, more and more uh, malonyl coa via the enzyme acetyl coa carboxylase moral of the story insulin triggers the fatty acid synthesis pathway or the key enzyme that regulates fatty acid biosynthesis pathway just to give you a quick sense of the other side when there is basically low blood glucose level insulin is not there right because insulin is pretty much glucose sensitive so in that case glucagon takes charge and glucagon activate the kinase enzyme acetyl coa carboxylase is basically converted into its inactive conformation in that case no malonyl coa would form and no anabolism would happen and it makes sense because when you are in a starving state why body would uh, waste energy to make something new body would try to break whatever existent and get energy out of it so this is all of these actions are very nicely understood in a physiological context if we imagine that 
so insulin secretion mechanism is important to understand so inside the pancreatic cell if we, pan pancreas if we cut a cross section we would see something like this there are endocrine and exocrine region right now we are po pointing towards the endocrine region where we can see the pancreatic beta cell in green so if we zoom into it we would understand the mechanism of action so here is a pancreatic beta cell so inside those pancreatic beta cell in the nucleus there would be specific gene that would give rise to the uh, polypeptide chains for insulin so there are INS genes located in chromosome 11 p uh, 15.5 so this gene would be giving rise to mRNA mRNA would be eventually transported outside the nucleus on the rough endoplasmic reticulum there are a lot of ribosome which are sitting there so that would possibly give rise to the protein or amino acid synthesis this is how the insulin is made and it is channeled from the rough endoplasmic reticulum throughout the normal transport pathway and it is kept in the vesicles so in these vesicles insulin processing happens now again let's try to understand the procedure in a bit more details so already these pancreatic beta cells has ready-made insulin containing vesicles which are ready to be released ready to be released by a trigger signal so question is what is the trigger signal so the trigger signal here is basically blood glucose elevation so when there is blood glucose elevation like after a meal then pancreas had a sense of that how does pancreas know because there are GLUT2 transporters in these beta cells and so GLUT2 transporter lead to glucose entry so when glucose entry happens then glucose gets converted to glucose 6-phosphate glycolysis happens but after a point of time there would be excess amount of glucose 6-phosphate so when there is too much of production of ATP the potassium channel is basically uh, inhibited and basically when there is too much of glucose the pancreatic beta cell is in a depolarized state this triggers more calcium influx and vesicular release of the cell. So this is how we can understand when glucose entry can trigger the vesicles which had insulin to be uh, thrown outside. And these insulin would be now uh, moved to the bloodstream to channelize glucose into tissues. And it doesn't allow the glucose to stay in the blood for long. In a sense, it's good, right? So let's talk about insulin signaling. So insulin signaling happens via insulin receptor. So insulin receptor binds to insulin receptor substrate. It can also bind to all those classical MAP kinase component pathways. Anyway, it can lead to PI3K AKT signaling, which lead to activation of mTOR. mTOR is pretty much a uh, master regulator of anabolism. So mTOR act via phosphase 6K and that triggers many anabolic genes. Now, in case of the MAP kinase signaling pathway, there are RAS, RAF, MAKE, and ARC in these pathway modulators. So ARC lead to specific type of uh, gene transcription, which promotes growth, survival, and proliferation. So overall, insulin gives rise to all its proliferative activity via these signaling arms. Anyway, these signaling arms are much more complicated. This is overly simplified view for a better understanding. So there are different different transporters present for uh, channelizing glucose. For example, in adipose tissue, it's glucose, uh, it's GLUT4, or in muscles also, it's GLUT4. GLUT1 is found in uh, placenta, brain, retina, RBCs. GLUT2 is found in intestine, kidney, and liver. GLUT3 is mostly found in brain and placenta. So depending upon what type of organ it is, different type of glucose transporters would be present. So overall, we looked at the insulin processing, insulin function, insulin signaling and insulin secretion. So I hope this summary was nice. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe. See you in the next video.